Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your raw results and superstars <coughs> matches. Uh, advertised dark main event of, of uh, Raw is, is uh, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins, Kane, and Kevin Owens in a six man tag. Happy birthday to uh, former uh, WWE wrestler Tatanka, real name Chris Chavis, turned 54 years old. He was born June 8, 1961. Happy birthday to Ahmed Johnson, aka Tony Norris, turned 52. He was born June 6, 1961. TNA wrestler Drew Galloway turned 30 on Saturday. He was born June 6, 1985. ODB, real name Jessica Cressa, turned 37 on Saturday. She was born June 6, 19. Uh, uh, 1978, ODB spent her birthday wrestling in Nashville for Ring of Honor. Mike Bucci turned 43. He was born in uh, 1972 on June the 5th. Bucci worked as Nova in ECW, Simon Dean in WWE. Uh, <coughs> Hall of Famer Mick Foley turned 50. Miss, Mrs. Foley's baby boy Bar was born June the 7th, 1965. Foley spent his Birthday weekend performing, and uh, as he had sh shows in Rahway and Monroe, New Jersey, on Saturday, you can find his upcoming dates for his great one-man shows at realmcfoley.com. Wrestling at New Jewish Community Center. For more information, read Paul Guzzo's tbo.com story. Uh, there's a buffet dinner that costs $60 for adults and $38 for children. For their fundraiser, under and under age 12. That's uh, for children under age 12. $38 cost of sponsoring the wall. And that's supposed to go for the Florida Wall Hall of Fame. It is $250,000. The story also features quotes from Joe Simon, a.k.a. Joe Malenko. Yeah, that's Dean Malenko's brother, who has been a vocal supporter of the project. As he's uh, tag teaming in, uh, I believe it's New Japan Wrestling for an event. <clears throat> so, yes, they are still wrestling. Two man power trip of wrestling podcast with Joe Malenko. As, it's, uh, as you can find the podcast at tmptow.podomatic.com. Championship Wrestling from Florida event to benefit Championship Wrestling from the Florida Wall of Fame. This is a multifunctional event. It is going to allow a place for a lot of boys who haven't seen each other for a long time. One of the, one of the guys I talked to today is a guy by the name of Scott McGee, who used to wrestle here. I actually helped him train, and nobody's seen Scott for a very long time. So it's a chance to have a little bit of a reunion among guys who don't get to see each other very often. For the fans, it's an amazing how. Most of the fans today know all these guys, even going back to their 50s. Because the wrestling fans are amazing. Some fans are real archivists. Uh, the fans are, or archivists, the fans are going to get a, a chance to see the guys that don't normally see. And the actual guys you may never see again. That's sad to say that there are guys who are getting older and may retire from doing fan fest and meet and greets. He comments about breaking into the wrestling business. Getting into the business was a natural progression for me. My dad uh, really didn't open up, open up many doors. He helped me get get to people that open open up those doors. Speaking of Carl Carl Gotch got me into Mexico the first time. A J a Jacobs up in the Carolinas trained me before I went to Mexico while I was working for Mid Atlantic. My dad did get me in there, but he didn't push me. I refereed most and uh, wrestled a little bit. I was actually a guy. But if you wanted to break it in business in the mid-Atlantic, was one of the guys you went down and trained with and worked out against. <clears throat> the whole promise of what that was, if you go down with a referee and you can't beat him, then what chance do you stand? What uh, Most of the guys I went down there with would say that I was killing them and they would quit while we were working out. And I would go back to the office and let them know. He comments about his brother and the wrestler he became. I was one of his biggest fans. He was absolutely, absolutely great. He had some phenomenal talent that he worked against, which 
always helped like Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio and those guys. The whole cruiserweight division was a, was stellar if you were any kind of a hand and you couldn't have good matches and then you couldn't have them anywhere he, and he really shined. I was and am still proud of him. I didn't know he would make it into big leagues because we didn't think that was possible, but thank God ECW opened up the door first and introduced these guys. Then the WCW picked them all up before it was the big man's game. Comments of teaming with Dean and facing the other great tag teams and working in Japan. Everything that you've ever heard about the crowds in Japan, I am going to mirror. They were, they were a very respectful group of people, and you never had to worry about whether or not you were going to walk to the ring. If you had heat, nobody was going to stab you or attack you. We had many great matches where against the Fantastics, the Bulldogs, uh, Dr. Death Steve Williams, and Terry Gordy, and we were a part of a major mutual admiration society with the Bulldogs. Uh, we had a great place to be put uh, to be over there and to be able to wrestle and show a ground game was a huge plus. Last but not least, they paid us. When you went to Japan, you knew that uh, you were going to make. And at the end of the tour, you got what you were told. And I think they helped all the guys get along for most of the part. And I made some of my best friends while working over there. Other topics included his legendary father, Boris Malenko. And would the WWE wrestlers be able to work in the old territory system? Championship wrestling from Florida and his greatest matches while working in the business. <clears throat> and WWE issued the following press release to ProWrestling.net on Monday. WWE and the USA Network revealed the 40 finisher finalists selected from the 11,100 submissions for the WWE Tough Enough on www.toughenough.com. Fans can also tune in to Monday Night Raw before uh, uh, before Raw tonight at 8 p.m. to check out the pre-show on the USA Network. Of course, it's on the network, but not USA Network, for a look at the Final 40. 40 finalists will advance to the WWE Tough Enough mini camp at the end of the week taking place at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida, starting this Wednesday, June the 10th, in the evening time, and through Friday, June the 12th. Accumulating with the announcement of the final 13 contestants, as two were eliminated already that I know of, uh, the journey of the final 40 will be chronicled on the WWE Network exclusive Tough Enough Competition Special, which aired t airs Tuesday, June the 16th at 8 p.m. Tough Enough will, will premiere Tuesday, June 23rd at 8 p.m. 7 Central on USA Network. And Around the World is hosted by WWE Superstar Chris Jericho, who will also be joined by a panel of judges including The Hulkster, Daniel Bryan, and WWE Diva Page. The season will combine... That can't miss excitement of live television with reality drama. As WWE hopefuls vie for the once in a lifetime opportunity to become the next WWE superstar or diva, and along with the $250,000 contract for the first year, unlike anything on TV today, the lightning fast hour of entertainment and competition will include live results every week, giving fans worldwide the power to decide who stays and who goes on, on, on the very same night. Each week, one cast member will be eliminated until one man and one woman are considered tough enough, with each earning a one-year $250,000 WWE contract. Throughout the competition, the contestants will be trained by Booker T, Billy Gunn, and Lita. Contestants will also come face-to-face -face with WWE icons, including WWE Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Vince McMahon, Executive Vice President, Talent, Live, Events, and Creative, Paul Levesque, that's Triple H, Chief Brand, Chief Brand Officer, Stephanie McMahon, and WWE Superstar, John Cena, among others. WWE has released the names of the 40 finalists for Tough Enough from Long Island, New York, Adam O'Reiner, from Dallas, Texas, Alexander Freaky, 
Uh, from Springfield, Massachusetts, Alexander Galazia from Massachusetts, uh, uh, from Yorkstown Heights, New York, Amanda Sakamano, Ashley Abransky from Oakland, California, Ava Knight Salika from Las Vegas, Carly Marshall, who was uh, eliminated on the uh, first tapings. <clears throat> the first day of tapings uh, from Los Angeles. Chelsea Green, Victoria, British, British Columbia, Canada. Danielle Camella from Scottsdale, Arizona. Daria Marinado from Los Angeles. David Michael Barnes from Mandan, New Jersey. Diana Dahlgreen from Spokane, Washington. Don Arner from Pittsburgh. Gabby Castavinci from Southington, Connecticut. Gia Georgia Pesquina from Best Bain, Australia. Hank Avery Jr. from Macon, Georgia. John Vasquez from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Jeremiah Kingdom from Los Angeles. Joshua Brettel from Thornton, Colorado. Khalil Bell from San Jose, California. Kevin Pentick from Bell, West Virginia. Krishani San Jorge from, from Puerto Rico. Laria Gaston from Los Angeles. Lorenzo Davis, the second, who was also eliminated on Tuesday. Uh, he's from Los Angeles. Mata Abdel Hamid from Los Angeles. Uh, Michael Mio from Staten Island, New York. Mike Hayes, no, not Michael P.S. Hayes. Well, this one's from Louisville, Kentucky. Nehemiah Kingdom from Los Angeles. Uh, seems like we got the two Kingdom brothers. Hmm. Nicholas Kufari from Lakewood, Ohio. Patrick Clark from Washington, D.C. Philip Guilford from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Samantha Sage from Los Angeles. Well, there's a lot of Los Angeles from, from, uh, from, uh, that made uh, the top 40. Sarah Bittencourt from San Jose, California. Sarah Lee, no, not the baker, from Hope, Michigan. Well, maybe she could be a baker. Uh, Stephen Tezanos Pinto from Sacramento, California. Tanner Saracino from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Tommaso Giannuzzi from Germany. Vinny Tortorella from Staten Island, New York. Zach Boss from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and Zamariah ZZ Lout from Bayou Bluff, Louisiana. So we got a low, our uh, state representative from Louisiana. Follow 40 we will be down to 13 following a three day mini camp, and it ends on Friday. Uh, uh, WAB also announced that uh, there will be a WAB network special on June the 16th at 7 p.m. Central Time, that chronicles the journey of the Final Four, the Final 40 contestants. The revolutionary WWE Tough Enough app is now available for download. This app will provide an unprecedented fan experience before, during, and after the show by enabling fans to vote for who says who goes with results calculated in real time during the final minutes of each episode. The app will also conclude contestant bios and video and social updates as the competition unfolds throughout the week. Speaking of, speaking of the girl that got eliminated due to injury, her knee uh, went out on her. The other guy, I guess uh, the Booker T and uh, Lita, and I think Triple H just said, uh, you've been future endeavored. That's just my guess. Following matches taped for, from Toronto for Ring of Honor TV show, <clears throat> Kyle O'Reilly defeated Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian in a handicap match by disqualification. Jushin Thunder Liger defeated Dalton Castle. Bob Evans fought Cheeseburger to an apparent no contest. Matt Taven and Michael Bennett fought Dalton Gallows and Carl Anderson to an apparent double DQ. And this was uh, Wednesday's uh, show. Ring of Honor television show premieres on Sinclair Broadcast Group Affiliates in syndication before it airs on Destination America. The review of the show will be available again when the show airs on Destination America before Impact Wrestling. 
Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion Frankie Kazarian was interviewed by Mark Madison of NewsHub.com. Following highlights of the interview can be followed at the, uh, the full at the News Hub, uh, the dash new, NewsHub.com. Any comments on his WWE run? My time in WWE was less than a year, and all that that had to do with me. I didn't mature enough as a wrestler or a man to be there. It was the first time that wrestling became a business and not something I loved because I saw the business side of it. Now I realize that what it is and not then. I was like, wow, the WWE is a, is a giant machine that is the biggest company in the world and always will be. I just wasn't ready to be there on that on the mental level, personally or professionally. And then he comments on Tough Enough. Part of it pains me to see guys coming on and cutting their promos and saying I love the business and I would do anything to be in the business. Then why haven't you done that yet? It always kind of bugs me to see that. There are a lot of us that took the road and didn't uh, did the Indies and went to the Japan and Mexico and busted her ass just for a chance to get looked at somewhere and all of a sudden a, a, a game show comes along where people can submit their tapes. I'm not going to fault anyone for getting a spot the way they, they got a spot. If you love this business and you're willing to work hard, then more power to you. Well, I guess Kazarian doesn't know that some of these individuals that send into videos are indie fed wrestlers. Hmm. And Kazarian comments on marrying former TNA knockout Tracy Brooks. It's great having somebody that has been there and done that, that knows what I'm going through. Being a wrestler's wife is probably the hardest thing to do on this planet. I can't imagine regular quote unquote women having to endure to put up with what we put them through, by, but being somebody that did a lot in the business, she understands what I go through. So it makes my job a lot easier, and she's very knowledgeable in terms of it. I need to, If I need to talk to somebody about something, she's there, and it makes my life a whole lot easier. It probably makes her life miserable. But, so I'm sorry. I don't, she doesn't, she doesn't, Entertain the idea of coming back. She probably did more in this business than ever, than she ever thought she'd do. She had a, a kind of a very successful career just being a farm girl from St. Mary's, Ontario. She achieved a lot and still has friends in the business. Her days in the ring are probably done, but who knows if she might pop up on an appearance here or there. She has no regrets. She has her career and she will always love the business. Well, there is a time when you move on. She's happy with that. She's just happy to ride off into the sunset. Uh, it, it's cool to see Kazaria take the responsibility for his WWE run not going well. It shows how much he has matured since the time in his life. He, he has a very valid point about tough enough participants. Granted, there are some independent wrestlers in the mix. But his point is very true when it comes to the newcomers who claim that they've always wanted to be pro wrestlers. Kazarian also spoke about his tag team with Christopher Daniels and their longtime friendship with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and being trained by Killer Kowalski and more. Live notes from the WWE pre-show that's being broadcast from the WWE Network. A shot aired of the fans entering the Smoothie King Center from New Orleans. From the studio in Stanford, Connecticut, Scott Stanford, Corey Graves, and David Otunga served as a show host again. Spoke about the Money in the Bank event. It took just over a minute for Graves to mention that WWE has topped a half billion social media followers. Miss TV with guests Ryback and Big Show was announced for Raw. In a shocking twist, Graves predicted Seth Rollins winning the, at, at the Money in the Bank. While Otunga took the opposing viewpoint as for Money in the Bank, Otunga Went with Roman Reigns as his favorite and as the devil as the dark horse. There's no logical opposing view for Graves to give. So they cut in with a merchandise plug. Yeah, really. Otoko said John Cena's promo on last week's Raw reminded him of a scene from movie Eight Mile, the movie Eight Mile. Stamper noted that uh, Cena and Owens will both be at Raw. The host then previewed Ryback and Big Show appearing on Miss TV. Stafford pointed out that Otunga wasn't wearing a bow tie, which is rare. 
Uh, Roman Reigns versus Kofi Kingston, Kane versus Dolph Ziggler, and Randy Orton versus Sheamus were all announced for Raw. The host made, made a big fuss over Dean Ambrose, posting a photo of himself on Instagram, posing with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship while standing in front of the Superdome. The host closed the show with their bold predictions. And Raw opens from New Orleans with Michael Cole, Slaw, JBL, and Byron Saxon, who was filling in for Booker T. Cena makes his mention of the broken nose suffered last night from the live event from Lake Charles and heads to the ring. And yeah, that's where my daughter and my ex-wife live now. Cena declares that the champ is here. Uh, Cena hyped the Money in the Bank and his match with NXT champion Kevin Owens, calling it the most anticipated rematch in WWE history. Cena says he will prove that his time isn't up. He's just getting started. He goes on and on and up comes Owens. Owens speaks from the ramp and says all Cena is doing is proving his point that Cena is really delusional. Owens says Cena is delusional if he thinks he will win on Sunday. Cena is delusional. If he thinks people want to see him kick off Raw with an open challenge for the U.S. title. Owen says people are tired of watching Cena open Raw as he's done for 10 years now. Owen proposes a NXT title open instead. And it's met with a very mixed reaction. Cena likes that idea and accepts. So we got Cena adding to the, to the broadcast team. Announcer Owens enters the ring and now says Cena won't be wrestling him tonight. Because they're wrestling on Sunday. Cena says his open challenge just are for anyone who wants to fight. Cena hypes the New Orleans crowd and says he is the man to beat. Cena kicks off the U.S. Open Challenge and taunts Owens in his face. Owens says he's going to ignore all of that and let the next superstar that comes down the ramp choose which title he wants to fight for. Music hits and down comes Neville. Neville says he's, an he's answered Cena's challenge before, but he would love to fight Cena again one day. Uh, Neville says since becoming NXT champion, Owen's like, Owen acts like uh, he has a license to disrespect everyone else. Neville says Owens isn't worth worthy of the NXT title. Neville calls himself a proud former NXT champion and tells Cena he's here to beat Owens for the NXT title. Cena leaves the ring. Happily, and we've got a match for the, the uh, after the commercial break, and it is for the NXT title. Back from the break, and John Cena is joined the commentary. Match starts, and they go back and forth to fight outside the ring and back in. Owen kept control and does the cannonball roll on, on the corner for a two count. Owen drops Neville over the top rope, stomps on him. Owen keeps uh, Neville grounded. Owen continued to dominate Neville and toss him onto the floor as the fans boo as we go to commercial. Uh, back from the break, Owens is in control of, of until Neville hits a big DDT while Owen tries to mock Cena. Owen comes back and drops Neville with an elbow. Neville dumps over to the floor and ends up on the top. Uh, up on, out on the floor with him. Neville brings it back in. Right in the ring. But Owens tries to fight, fight him off. Neville misses a drop with a missile drop kick for a two count. Owens ends up dropping Neville on his head over the knee for a close two count of his own. Owens run, uh, runs into a kick. Neville with a German suplex. Neville gets hyped and picks Owens up for another German suplex, holding it for a two count. Neville goes up top for the red arrow, but Owens jumps up and cuts him off. Neville with an insecurity. He goes back up for the red arrow, but Owens rolls out of the way. Neville lands on his feet and nails a, a kick to the jaw. And then goes back up for the red arrow, but Owens hits the ropes. Owens nails a pop-up powerbomb for the win. After the win, Owens takes the NXT title, and Cena stands up at the announcer's table. They both raise their best titles and look at each other for a stare down. Owens then invites Cena to come into the ring as he does. They get a stare down, and Owens leaves the ring to booze. Owen talks trash on his way up the ramp. Yeah, Cena looks on. Then we get a video for Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Back to commercial. We come back to Coleslaw Tout. WWE has a billion social media followers. Triple H and Stephanie were backstage when Seth Rollins walks in. 
We're all upset about the Instagram photos of Dean Ambrose around New Orleans with the WWE World title. Well, they told him for all of the comments about being on his own last week. Triple H is going to let Rollins pick his opponent for tonight so he can show them what he can do. He thanks them for their confidence in him and says he won't let them down. Renee Young backstage with Divas Champion Nikki Bella. She says Paige is naive and expects everything to be handed to her. Nikki says that the Bella twins have there have never held, held anyone back and announces that she will be facing Summer Rae tonight. The, uh, Paige tried to hold, to hold down. Nikki also revealed the title match against Paige on Sunday. Nikki says that this may be Paige's house, but she's living in the Bella's world. So we get Summer Rae versus Nikki Bella. We go to the ring. Out comes Summer Rae. Back to commercial. Back from the break. Out comes Diva Champion Nikki Bella for a non-title match. They lock up and go at it. Nikki got the upper hand and shows off with push-ups. Nikki runs into a boot in the corner. Summer Rae comes back and knocks her down for a two-count. Summer gets a submission move. No tap out. N Nikki fought, fought out. But Summer slammed her by her hair for a two count. Summer then dropped Nikki with, uh, with a kick for a two count. And we see Paige watching backstage. Nikki with a back elbow and a springboard kick out of the corner. Nikki scoops Summer for the rock attack and nails it for the win. We get a look at Roman Reigns competing three times last week. Still to come segment. Reigns will face Kofi Kingston. Back to commercial. Back for the break. Out comes Roman Reigns through the crowd. Roman enters through the ring and looks up at the Money in the Bank briefcase. He says there was a time he hated that briefcase, but it doesn't look so bad now that it's not attached to Jackass Seth Rollins. Reigns talks about winning and going on to cash in. He says he believes Dean Ambrose will walk away with the title on Sunday. Kane's music interrupts and out he comes. They have words and Reigns invites him into the ring to get a broken jaw. Dolph Ziggler's music hits and out he comes with a mic. Ziggler takes shot at, shots at Kane and calls him the greatest tool of the authority. The biggest tool in WWE. Ziggler talks about winning the briefcase on Sunday. Kane suggests that they both watch their mouth. Our truce music interrupts and now he comes. Truth says he's conquered his fear of ladders at WrestleMania. And this Sunday, Kane cuts him off and asks why he's out there. Truth talks about what he's going to do at Money in the Bank and Kane reminds him he's not even in the match. Truth said that that this was a mistake. His bad. Truth apologizes to New Orleans, and as Reigns and Ziggler laugh in the ring, Truth walks off. Kane goes to talk again, but the music interrupts, and out comes tag team champions, the New Day. The cut promos as Kane goes to talk one more time. One the music of Sheamus interrupts. He talks trash about what he's going to do at Money in the Bank. Randy Orton ends up coming out before we go to commercial. <laughs> back running right with a break and the match is already underway they fight to the floor and back in the ring with the work in, in control Sheamus with kicks out of the corner Sheamus with an uppercut with an, and then another Sheamus turns it around in the corner but Orton come, comes back with an uppercut and strikes him strikes into the opposite corner lots more back and forth Sheamus takes Orton to the mat by his arm and works him over we come back from a commercial, and Sheamus continues to dominate Orton. Orton fights out of a hold, but Sheamus drops him with a knee to the gut. Sheamus with another pin attempt after a forearm to the jaw. Sheamus with a headlock. Orton fought out and hit an uppercut. Sheamus caught him, and it was a big slam for a two count. More back and forth actions with strikes. Orton with a kick to the face and a pair of clotheslines. Orton ducks the clothesline and hits the power slam. Scoop slam, power slam. Orton runs into a boot in the corner. Uh, Seamus charges and Orton moves. Seamus hits the ring post. Orton with a big exploder super, uh, suplex. Orton hits the second rope date, being DDT, and gets the crowd hyped up. Orton goes for the arcade, but it's blocked. Orton dodges the bro kick and clothesline Seamus to the floor. Orton follows, but Seamus rams him into the apron. Seamus tosses Orton over to the announcer's table. Seamus grabs a steel chair and swings it, but Orton punches him in the gut. Orton tosses the chair at Seamus and gets the... Uh, DQ'd. After the bell, Orton tossed Seamus into the barrier and then the ring post. Orton sent, sent Seamus into the announcer's table and then back dropped him on top of it. Orton sends Seamus into the steel steps next. Orton stomps, 
stops his, his face on top of it and brings it back in the ring. Then nails a D, uh, an RKO in the middle of the ring for a big pop. Changing that segment. And it's still to come. Dean Ambrose with the World Heavyweight title. Rollins backstage with Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble walk in. They understand Rollins was angry last week. And earlier tonight when he said some things didn't really mean that he didn't need Double J security. Noble says Joey forgives Rollins. They say that they would be honored to be in his corner tonight and on Sunday. Rollins gets upset at the forgiving him comment and says he meant every word he said about them. He says he's made them relevant. And all they wanted to do, wanted in return, was a little com competence. He calls them the biggest morons in the history of WWE. Noble tells Rollins to screw himself and gets upset. He says Rollins is turning on them just like he did the Shield. They go on, and Rollins picks them both up to be his opponents tonight. Noble and Rollins start going at it, but Mercury gets in the middle. He says they're not jokes and have. Have had Rollins back since day one, but tonight they're kicking his ass and they walk off as they go to commercial. Next up, we got Dolph Ziggler versus Kane back from a commercial break and they're already going at it. Kane catches Dolph, uh, Ziggler in midair, but Ziggler sl slides out and nails drop kicks. Ziggler goes for a, ring, a big splash in the corner, but Kane knocked him out of the air with a big right hand. Then we see Lana looking on from the stage as Kane stomps away on, on Ziggler. Kane kept control and connected with another big right hand. Kane with a clothesline in the corner for a two count. Kane kept Ziggler grounded with a headlock. Kane's got control and hits a big splash uh, for another pen attempt. Kane with more stomps. Fans ch chanting for Lana as she looks on for the stage. And then uh, Kane beats Ziggler down in the corner for a little more. Kane with more offensive scoops slam and another two count. Ziggler with a kick to the face and some strikes. Kane whips him into the corner and hits a side slap for a two count. Lana has walked down the ramp some. Ziggler jumps up and hits a big DDT for a two count. Kane with more offense and another pin attempt as we go to commercial. Back for the commercial and Kane rams Ziggler into the corner. Ziggler managed to hit the famous for a two count. Kane blocked a super kick for a, and went for a choke slam. Ziggler saw, slid out and connected with a super kick. Lana looked on smiling. Rusev comes out on crutches and tries to get Lana to go to the back. She stumbles off the ramp, trying to get around him, and goes down on her ankle. <sighs> Ziggler sees this and is distracted. Kane grabs him and chokes down him for the win. After the match, referees are checking along with Ziggler on Lana on the side of the ramp. A trainer comes out as we go to the announcers. Commenting on it. And we see Double J security backstage talking about Rollins. Up next, Miss TV with Big Show. Back to commercial. Back from the break. Ziggler is in the trainer's room with Lana. The Miss is in the ring with Miss TV set. set. Miss talks, talks, but is interrupted by Intercontinental Champion Ryback, who will defend against Big Show on Sunday. Ryback tells New Orleans to wake up. If Miss is being bo has been if Miz has been booing them, Ryback takes a seat and, uh, and ha gets a Feed Me More chant starting. Ryback said he was robbed of the pleasure of me hooking Miz's face off last week. Ryback sh uh, shuts Miz up. Miz calls him ugly. Miz says Ryback and the fans know nothing about the value of having a good-looking face. They go back and forth on the mic until Big Show comes out. Show says Miz was the one tag team partner he hated immediately. Show knows Miz is trying to manipulate them. Ryback says he's not scared of Show, and if Show wants the title, he can come get it. Ryback stands up and raises the, the title, and Feed Me More Chance starts again. Show stands up, cuts the promo, and says he's going to beat Ryback on Sunday. Miz tries to rile them up, and Show threatens to shut his mouth permanently. Miz then attacks Show from behind, and Show knocks him away. Ryback attacks and Show knocks him down. Show clothesline Miz to the floor, but turns around to a big shell shot from Ryback. There's a fan chance. Feed me more as Ryback gets hype, and we go to replays. Still to come segment. Rollins versus Double J Security and Handicap Mass. Dean Ambrose is apparently headed to the arena also. Back to commercial. Los Matadors versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Back from the break. 
Los Matadors wait with El Torino as Eric Rowan and Luke Harper make their way out. Rowan starts for his team. One of the Matadors tags in with a move off the top rope for a two count on Rowan. Rowan with a clothesline and, and then a tag to, uh, to Harper. Harper with a big boot and a two count. Rowan tags in and hits a splash for a two count. Torino tries to get involved, but Rowan sends him to the floor. Rowan goes for a kick to the knee from Fernando. He goes to tag out, but Diego is, is tending to Torito. Harper tags in, and they hit the 3D on Fernando for the win. After the match, they hit another 3D. Harper grabbed the mic and said, The time to pay for your sins is coming. The judgment is waiting at your door. Rowan says it's okay to be afraid. You should be. Kane walked in on Rollins backstage and laughs about Ambrose's Instagram photos. Kane wishes Rollins good luck his match tonight. And Rollins says he doesn't need luck. Kane threatens to cash in his money in the bank after he wins on Sunday. Rollins says he will gladly put his boot in King Kane's ugly, disgusting face. Kane reveals he will be in Double J's corner tonight, and he walks off. Ambrose is right outside the, of the arena, according to Instagram, and he's got a ticket. Back to commercial. Back from the break, we get plugs for Tough Enough and Ted, too. Uh, Big E versus Titus O'Neil. What's up next? We go to the ring and tag team champions. The New Day are already out. Titus O'Neil's out next with Darren Young. Xavier Woods cheers on from ringside as they lock up and go at it. Big E slams Titus for a quick pin attempt. Big E mounts Titus with, with right hand. Right hands. Big E keeps control and applies an abdominal stretch as the fans do the New Day sucks chant. Titus finally makes a comeback and tosses Big E. He hits shoulders and goes for a scoop slam, but Big E slides out and become, comes from behind. Titus takes high to the corner for, for shoulder thrust and right hands. Titus gets hyped up and hits the splash in the corner. Titus knocks Big E across the ring. Woods goes after Young on the floor, but Titus grabs him. Big E takes advantage of the distraction and hits Big E, the big ending for the win. After the match, the New Day celebrates until Roman Reigns' music hits. Addy comes through the crowd. And your matchup is next. Well, the match is next. Roman Reigns versus Kobe Kingston. Reigns hits the ring as the New Day looks on. Back to the break. Come back from the break. They're already going at it as Kobe take, takes a breather early on. Comes back in and takes control of Wood, as Woods runs his mouth at ringside. Kobe works over Reigns in the corner. Reigns finally makes a comeback with a big clothesline. Reigns sends Kobe flying over top rope. In front of his partners, Reigns follows and slams Kofi's face into the announcer's table. Reigns with a big apron drop kick. Reigns comes back in as Big E and Woods check on Kofi at ringside. Reigns looks to dive out of the ring as they scatter. He runs back around the ring and floors Woods. Kofi takes advantage and drops Reigns at ringside. It was a go to commercial with Big E taking a talking trash to Reigns. Back from the commercial, and Kofi is being controlling Reigns with the help of his partners. Kofi gets a two count, and then he gets uh, got a kick in, and then another two count. Reigns fought out of a hole, but Kofi tripped him on the face, dropped a hole. Uh, Kofi uh, goes to the top for a big shot, but Reigns kicks out at two. Reigns with another comeback. Kofi misses a splash in the corner, but Reigns runs him over with two clotheslines. Reigns rams Kofi back into the corner and splashes him. Kofi ducks a big right hand, but Reigns slams him for a two count. Kofi fought out of, fought off of, out of, uh, fought, uh, out of Reigns' hole and uh, has an SOS counter for a roll up. Reigns powers up with a sit down power bomb for a two count. Kofi gets up and Reigns waits for a Superman punch. And has to knock Big E off the apron. Woods comes in next to distract Reigns. Kofi rolls him up from behind. Reigns runs into a, a kick in the corner. Kofi comes off the top, but Reigns hit him all the way down with a Superman punch and covers for the win. After the match, Reigns goes to ringside and grabs a steel chair. He leans against the barrier and waits on Dean Ambrose for music hit. Ambrose comes to the crowd with popcorn, soda, beads from Burger Street, and the WWE World War Heavyweight title. He greets Reigns at the barrier, as we see Triple H and Stephanie watching backstage with Rollins, who is going to get his title after some nudging from authority. Ambrose took it, uh, 
takes his front row seat from Reigns as we go as we go to commercial. Handicap match, Seth Rollins versus Joey, Mark Reed, and Jamie Noble. Back for the break, out comes the World Heavyweight Champion, Seth Rollins by himself without his title. Ambrose looks on with the title from the front row. Out next comes Double J Security to Kane's music. Mercury starts off with Rollins as they lock up. And then we get a commercial break. Rollins taunts Mercury. They lock up and trade holds. Mercury scrambles to the corner and in comes Noble. They lock up and trade holds. Rollins drops Noble with a shoulder and tosses high outside. Tosses him outside the ring in front of Kane. Mercury also gets tossed out. Rollins invites them back in the ring as they regroup and talk with Kane. Mercury and Noble corner Rollins as Kane distracts the referee. They beat Rollins down and knock him over the top rope in front of Ambrose who covers him in popcorn. Rollins comes back in and they double team with Mercury hitting a drop kick for a two count. Mercury with a deep arm drag. Rollins drops Mercury and knocks Noble off the apron. Rollins sends Mercury up to the floor, tosses him into the barrier. Rollins stares at Ambrose as he beats Mercury around the ringside. Rollins tosses Mercury into the barrier right in front of Ambrose, who laughs in Rollins' face. Rollins brings him back in the ring and hits a big forearm on Mercury in the corner. Mercury and then Noble have words as fans start chanting for Mercury. Mercury misses a punch and, and crawls for the tag, but Rollins stop, stomps on his hands. Yeah, Rollins uh, whips Mercury hard into the corner, and he goes down. Mercury counters and gets a two count on Rollins. Rollins comes right back and knocks him down, keeping him grounded. Mercury rolls out of the way in the corner, and Rollins goes out. Noble gets hot tag and unloads on Rollins. Noble gets hyped, dances around, hits the swing, swinging neck breaker for one count. Noble goes to the top. As fans chant, you still got it, but Rollins catches him. Rollins knocks Mercury to the floor. Rollins grabs Noble and suplexes him in front of the apron. But Mercury trips Rollins and Noble falls on top of him for a two count. Noble tries for another roll up, but Rollins kicks him in the face. Mercury comes from behind, but Rollins blocked him and dropped him with an elbow. Rollins power bomb Mercury into Noble in the corner. Mercury gets tossed to the floor as Rollins starts talking, stalking Noble. Rollins smacks Noble around and goes for the pedigree, but Ambrose jumps the barrier. He slides the title in the ring, and Rollins goes for it. Mercury tags in and comes from behind, rolling Rollins up for the win. <clears throat> After the match, Rollins recovers, and Kane celebrates with Double J Security at ringside. Rollins smiles as he raises the world heavyweight the title belt in the ring once again. Ambrose comes from behind and lays Rollins out with the dirty deeds. Ambrose takes the belt once again and raises it. As his music hits, Kane... Takes off to the back with Double J Security as Ambrose marches to the to the group of ladders set up beside the stage. Ambrose climbs the ladder and raises the title as Rollins looks on from the ring. This roll goes off the air with Ambrose still holding the, the title high. And your dark match rate main event results from Raw in New Orleans. Saw John Cena defeat Bray White with an attitude adjustment. White reportedly received one of the bigger pops of the night. And that concludes my raw video for the, this week. Thanks again. Peace out. And that being June the 9th. Thanks again. Peace out. God bless you. One better be you. By the way, if you don't know, you better call me, bro. And here's a pic that I promised uh, from the Tough Enough as well. Contestants. God bless.